Okay, in this video, we're going to continue in chapter 13 um, with a discussion of um, reaction quotients and equilibrium constants, really building on what we did um, in the last video. Uh, learning outcomes, expectations here, these are things we want you to be able to do or know um, by the time everything is um, all said and done. Uh, so just kind of marching through, um, we're going to just pick up where we left off, and this is from section 13.2. Uh, so as a recap from last time, you got a generic uh, reaction. Um, all reactions are defined by an equilibrium constant, which generically is uh, described by the law of mass action, the ratio of products over reactants, uh, not forgetting to raise those to their um, respective stoichiometric coefficients. Uh, what we didn't talk about last time is that the phase of those reactants matters. So we'll be focusing on three uh, phases, solid, liquid, gas, and um, an aqueous solution. So um, uh, these um, reactants or products dissolved in water. Uh, and so just some uh, definitions here. We've got homogeneous or homogeneous equilibrium versus heterogeneous equilibrium. Um, probably not surprising, given how we described uh, homogeneous and heterogeneous catalysis. Um, this just describes whether or not the species that are um, uh, involved in the reaction are the same phase, homogeneous or different. Um, so an example of homogeneous um, equilibrium would be the equilibrium between uh, N2O4 gas and NO2 gas. They're both gases. Gases are the same phase. That would be an example uh, of homogeneous equilibrium. Um, heterogeneous equilibrium would be two different phases. So just an example, calcium carbonate, uh, solid calcium carbonate uh, decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas. Because the gas is a different phase than the solids, this would be an example of heterogeneous equilibrium. Um, additionally, um, uh, worth noting, and I'll say the same thing I said in the last video, which I don't mean to be too glib about, uh, but we're going to take this with a grain of salt. Uh, we are going to um, uh, assume that pure liquids uh, and pure solids are not included in the expression for the equilibrium constant. Um, so uh, if you had something like this is uh, acetic acid and water, um, so acetic acid reacting with water to yield acetate and hydronium. I would set up my equilibrium constant expression. This is one we're going to see a lot in the next chapter, by the way. Um, I've got my product, my acetate, my hydronium, uh, divided by my reactants, um, acetic acid and water. But water is a pure liquid. We're just going to ignore it. So um, take that with a grain of salt, just like we're going to report unitless uh, values for the, the equilibrium constant. If you care about why, chemistry major 4410 one day. But we're going to um, uh, uh, take that there. Same thing with solids. So that calcium carbonate uh, example from before, um, the equilibrium constant are product, is products over reactants. So my calcium oxide, carbon dioxide over my uh, calcium carbonate, but those solids, the, the parentheses S, we're going to ignore. So the equilibrium constant for this reaction would just be the um, amount of CO2 present at equilibrium. Um, so uh, what this means for this, if you started out with calcium carbonate uh, in a closed vessel, remember we're assuming that we're at least giving everything a chance to reach equilibrium, uh, and you let it go over some amount of time, could be a long time, could be a short time, um, what you would eventually see is that the calcium carbonate would produce calcium oxide. Full disclosure, I don't know why it hopped over there, but this is just as a visual. Um, so the calcium carbonate is converted into calcium oxide um, and carbon dioxide gas. And that carbon dioxide, the amount there is, is dictated by the magnitude of K. If K is really big, you're going to have a lot of carbon dioxide. If K is really small, you're only going to have a little bit. Um, but it doesn't matter uh, how much you started with, I will say, as long as you have enough uh, to, to reach equilibrium. So here we've got more calcium carbonate. Now we've got a more reasonable mix together. Um, we've got more calcium carbonate than calcium oxide. We still end up with five, six CO2s um, at equilibrium. Here we start out with more calcium oxide than calcium carbonate. Um, we reach equilibrium, and, and visually here we can see we reached equilibrium too because we still have some red or orange, some orange and green. Um, so we're not in that scenario where we ran out, and we have the same amount. So the, um, the amount of calcium carbonate, calcium oxide, does not determine um, the overall amount of CO2 that's present uh, at 
equilibrium. Um, I will say, just as a, a quick um, aside, we talked about equilibrium vapor pressures in um, uh, chapter 10. Um, so if I have a liquid like water, um, it's going to evaporate until the pressure of the water vapor um, is whatever the equilibrium vapor pressure of water is at that temperature. And that's going to be the same whether you had a giant vat of water or a tiny little thimble of water. Um, the amount of water, just like the amount of the solid, doesn't matter. So the, the solid and liquid do not determine, the amount, excuse me, of pure solids and liquids uh, do not determine the equilibrium amount of, of a gas or, or another um, uh, a species. And this is just saying the same thing, right? We counted up the, the CO2s, but we could have also referenced the pressure in that manometer. All right, another kind of um, uh, abrupt turn here, but another thing we can do if we want to and why we want to is something we'll save for later. But we can um, uh, mathematically manipulate <coughs> the equilibrium constant. So if I have a reaction A to B, the equilibrium constant is products of reactants, B over A. <coughs> if I were to think about the reverse reaction, B going to A, now my reactant is my product, my product is my reactant. Um, so this is would be you know a over b, that wouldn't expect it to be the same value. <coughs> um, so this is we're calling it k prime, uh, and k prime is just the inverse of k, one over k. Um, the second thing we can do is if we multiply a balanced reaction through by some factor x, the equilibrium constant is going to be raised to that x power. So again, going back to simple a to b, equilibrium constant products of reactants b over a. Uh, if this reaction is balanced, then it should be fair that I can multiply through by 2 or by 3 or by 1 half. Um, if it was balanced before, it should be balanced after. Uh, this equilibrium constant, again, k prime, would be uh, b raised to the x the power, products raised to their respective power, divided by a raised to the x the power. Um, that is just k raised to the x power. So if you, if you take a reaction uh, described by an equilibrium constant k and you multiply that reaction through by some constant x, you raise that equilibrium constant to that power. Um, and lastly, something that will be useful later, if you have two or more reactions that are added together to yield an overall net reaction, the equilibrium constant is the product of the equilibrium constants of your stepwise reaction. So uh, I'll prove this to you quickly here. Um, I've got a multiple uh, equilibria, so this is a two-step reaction. Uh, a plus B yielding E plus F. We've got C and D intermediates, remember from chapter 12. Um, if I were to describe the rate, uh, sorry, the equilibrium constants for the first step and for the second step, um, we've got K prime and K double prime. Uh, K prime would be for that first step, A plus B yielding C plus D. My second step would be the C plus D intermediate yielding E plus F. So I've got my equilibrium constant for the first step, products of a reactant, C, D over A, B. My equilibrium constant for the second step, products of a reactant, E, F over C, D. My overall net reaction, again, C and D are intermediates. My overall net reaction is um, A and B yielding E and F. The equilibrium constant for the overall reaction uh, is going to be the product, so um, that, that's the, the take home. The equilibrium constant for the overall reaction is a product of K prime and K double prime. And we can justify that uh, by plugging in K prime and K double prime. The CDs cancel out when we pl uh, multiply those together. And we end up with EF over AB, which is products over reactants for that overall reaction. So you add, and again, why we're going to do this, maybe not so clear, and that's okay right now. But if you did this, hypothetically, if you know an equilibrium constant for reaction one, and you know an equilibrium constant for reaction two, and you want to know the overall equilibrium constant for the net reaction, you're just going to multiply those two together. Um, uh, so now just kind of, a, again, another kind of turn. Um, once we know the equilibrium constant, once we have it, what can we do with it? Um, one thing we can do is determine if a reaction is at equilibrium. So um, if my reaction has, my rea reaction mixture rather, has a ratio of products of a reactants that is K, K is the ratio of products to reactants at equilibrium, then I'm at equilibrium. 
Um, another thing that we can do is predict what the reaction will do if it's not at equilibrium uh, in an effort to get there. All reactions want to reach equilibrium. If you're not there yet, what are you going to do to get there? Um, Got to move my head out of the way. <laughs> I predict um, uh, what, and this will be for next time, but if a reaction um, at equilibrium is perturbed, if I do something to it, what will it do? Um, and then the last thing that we can do, which is um, uh, everybody's favorite Chem 2 thing, is uh, do some calculations. So what is the concentration or what will the concentration of reactants and products be um, once equilibrium uh, eventually has been reached on whatever time scale. Uh, so this is what we're going to do today. Um, the latter two are what we'll do in, in subsequent videos. Um, so to get there, am I at equilibrium and what am I going to do if I'm not in order to get there? Uh, where we define what's called a reaction quotient described by a capital Q. Um, and this is essentially the same thing as K. It's just the ratio of products to reactants. But Q can be described at any point. So K is the rea um, got reaction A going to be here. A decreases while B increases. Eventually those amounts stagnate. We get that static composition. Um, the reaction uh, equilibrium constant, excuse me, is the ratio of products to reactants when I reach equilibrium, when they're not changing. It is constant. The reaction quotient can be described anytime, whether you're at equilibrium or not. So the reaction quotient is not a constant, right? The reaction quotient will evolve in time until it reaches K. So if Q is equal to K, then you are at equilibrium. If it's not, then you're not. So just to go through some details here, um, it is fundamentally, um, or at least that's the wrong word, it is um, seemingly <laughs> the same as K. It's the ratio of products to reactants, same idea, you're raising everything to its respective stoichiometric coefficient, same form as the uh, equilibrium constant expression. Um, the difference is that these are the ratios of products to reactants at any time that you're referencing. So you can calculate Q for any point in a reaction, uh, whether you're at equilibrium or not. Um, while K, the equilibrium constant is constant, since, hence the name, uh, at a given temperature, Q evolves in time. It is not constant um, uh, if, if the reaction is not at equilibrium. And comparing Q to K will tell you where you are, either at equilibrium or if not, what's going to happen in an effort to get there. Uh, so just to, to summarize here, if Q is equal to K, if your ratio of products over reactants right now is the ratio of products over reactants, if and when you reach equilibrium, then you're at equilibrium. You're there. You made it. Um, uh, alternatively, if Q is not K, then you are not at equilibrium and you've got a choice. You either need to proceed to make more products or proceed to make more reactants to get there. Um, so if Q, you're, and, and again, the red here, K, the equilibrium constant is the goal. If Q is smaller than K, if Q is less than your goal, then you need to make Q bigger, right, to get to the goal. And you can make Q bigger by increasing the numerator, decreasing the denominator, making more C and D, depleting more A and B, um, proceeding to the right. So if Q is less than K, you don't have enough product and or you have too many reactants saying the same thing, your reaction is going to proceed to the right to beef up your products, we'll get a bigger numerator uh, and deplete your reactants, a smaller denominator. So if Q is less than K, you're going to proceed to the right until you reach that equilibrium constant. Uh, conversely, if Q is not K, you're not at equilibrium. If Q is bigger, then you've got too many products. You've got a numerator that's too big and or not enough reactants, a denominator that's too small, your reaction is going to proceed to the left. C and D are going to react to make A and B. Um, your reaction is going to proceed, we'll use the word spontaneously later, your reaction is going to proceed to the left um, and it's going to continue to do that until it reaches equilibrium or until you run out of C and D, right? But again, we're going to, I, I shouldn't have said that. We're going to assume we have enough to, get, to reach equilibrium. Um, so your reaction is going to proceed to the left until you um, uh, um, uh, reach that magic number, that equilibrium constant. Uh, calculating Q, um, uh, so we have some examples here. So I've got a, a reaction A going to B. Um, I will note here that we're going to assume all of our um, amounts are molarities, but again, we ignore the unit. Um, we're going to take that with a grain of salt. So if I have an equilibrium mixture of A and B that's 2.8 molar and 1.2 molar, um, the molecular scenes below represent, so A is the red, B is the blue. 
various times during runs of A through D, uh, which scene is at equilibrium? And this could be a good place if you're feeling pretty good. I'd pause this and see if you can answer the question yourself. Uh, if you're not feeling so good and you want to move through it, then that's what we're going to do. So which scene is at equilibrium? Uh, what I need to do is I need to calculate Q and compare it to K. So here um, I'm told I have an equilibrium mixture. So I know I have an equilibrium mixture that is 2.8 to 1.2. With that information, I can calculate K, right? At equilibrium, B is 1.2. At equilibrium, A is 2.8. So that equilibrium constant, B 1.2 over 2.8 is 0.43. So for this reaction, at 175 degrees Celsius, the equilibrium constant is 0 0.43. Now what I can do um, is assume that I can go through for these and calculate Q. So these are gaseous molecules, they're in the same volume, um, so they'll have the same concentration. Um, the first one, we've got A, uh, sorry, eight of the blue, so eight Bs and two As. So eight over two is four. Four is a lot of things, but it's not 0.43. So um, this is not at equilibrium because Q is not K. Here we've got three blues and seven reds. Ratio three to seven is 0.43. This one is at equilibrium. Here we've got four blues and six reds, 0 0.67. 0 0.67 is not 0.43. This is not at equilibrium. Two blues over eight reds is a quarter, 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is not 0.43. So which scene is at equilibrium uh, would be B. Um, this reaction A, Q is too big. We're going to proceed left until Q is 4.43, excuse me. Um, here, Q is too big, so C is going to proceed left to make more A uh, in order, and, and by a smaller amount for sure, because 4 is way bigger than 0.43, um, but it's still going to proceed left until Q is 0.43. Uh, and this one here, Q is too small, 0.25, so it's going to proceed to the right to make more B deplete A until it reaches that 0.43 mixture. So it's going to proceed to the right until we get to that um, uh, e ratio that is equal to the equilibrium constant. Um, so in summary, um, equilibria can be either homogeneous or heterogeneous. Um, pure so uh, solids and liquids we're going to ignore, so we're going to essentially call them one if you care, but we're going to just leave them out of our equilibrium um, uh, calculations, our reaction quotient calculations, our law of mass action equilibrium constant calculations. Um, we can mathematically manipulate Q by uh, thinking about how we would, uh, uh, how it would be affected by considering a reverse direction, um, by multiplying through by some constant, or by um, uh, considering a multi-step reaction. Um, the reaction quotient Q is kind of like K, but it's different. So Q evolves in time until it reaches K. K is a constant at a given temperature. Um, uh, relative values of Q and K will tell you if a reaction is at equilibrium, and if not, what it will do, proceed left or right in an effort to get there. Uh, so I'll stop here. Um, next time we'll pick up with um, uh, uh, what, what we can do in terms of uh, perturbing the system um, and, and predicting what happens if I have a system at equilibrium and what, what, it, what happens if I do something to it. Um, so I should have said that here. So that, that's where we're headed next time. We'll talk about uh, what's called the Chatelier's principle. Um, and again, I just want to repeat that all the stuff we're doing here is um, very much in the abstract. I get that. Um, but this is sort of the building blocks for where we're headed in chapters 14 and 15, um, if not beyond. So we're worth kind of getting the fundamentals down before we start um, adding chemistry to it. So I will see you then.